Energetic neutral atom imaging, often described as seeing with atoms, is a technology used to create global images of otherwise invisible phenomena in the magnetospheres of planets and throughout the heliosphere, even to its outer boundary. This constitutes the far-flung edge of the solar system. The solar wind consists of ripped-apart atoms flying out of the sun. This is mostly hydrogen, that is, there electrons and protons, with a little bit of other kinds of nuclei, mostly helium. The space between solar systems is similar, but they come from other stars in our galaxy. These charged particles can be redirected by magnetic fields, for instance, Earth's magnetic field shields us from these particles. But, every so often, a few of them steal electrons from neutral atoms they run into. At that point, they become neutral, although they're still moving very fast, and they travel in an exact straight line. These are called energetic neutral atoms. Inner images are constructed from the detection of these energetic neutral atoms. Earth's magnetosphere preserves Earth's atmosphere and protects us from cell-damaging radiation. This region of space weather is the site of geomagnetic storms that disrupt communications systems and pose radiation hazards to humans traveling at high polar altitudes or in orbiting spacecraft. A deeper understanding of this region is vitally important. Geomagnetic weather systems have been late to benefit from the satellite imagery taken for granted in weather forecasting and space physics because their origins in magnetospheric plasmas present the added problem of invisibility. The heliosphere protects the entire solar system from the majority of cosmic rays but is so remote that only an imaging technique such as inner imaging will reveal its properties. The heliosphere's structure is due to the invisible interaction between the solar wind and cold gas from the local interstellar medium. The creation of ENAs by space plasmas was predicted but their discovery was both deliberate and serendipitous. While some early efforts were made at detection, their signatures also explained inconsistent findings by ion detectors in regions of expected low ion populations. Ion detectors were co-opted for further ENA detection experiments in other low-ion regions. However, the development of dedicated ENA detectors entailed overcoming significant obstacles in both skepticism and technology. Although ENAs were observed in space from the 1960s through 1980s, the first dedicated ENA camera was not flown until 1995 on the Swedish Astrid-1 satellite to study Earth's magnetosphere. Today, dedicated ENA instruments have provided detailed magnetospheric images from Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Cassini's ENA images of Saturn revealed a unique magnetosphere with complex interactions that have yet to be fully explained. The image mission's three dedicated ENA cameras observed Earth's magnetosphere from 2000 to 2005 while the TWINS mission, launched in 2008, provides stereo ENA imaging of Earth's magnetosphere using simultaneous imaging from two satellites. The first ever images of the heliospheric boundary, published in October 2009, were made by the ENA instruments aboard the Ibex and Cassini spacecraft. These images are very exciting because they challenge existing theories about the region. Creation of ENAs The most abundant ion in space plasmas is the hydrogen ion, a bare proton with no excitable electrons to emit visible photons. The occasional visibility of other plasma ions is not sufficient for imaging purposes. ENAs are created in charge exchange collisions between hot solar plasma ions and a cold neutral background gas. These charge exchange processes occur with high frequency in planetary magnetospheres and at the edge of the heliosphere. Charge exchange in a charge exchange collision between a high-energy plasma ion and a cold neutral atom. The ion steals electrons from the neutral atom, producing a cold ion and an energetic neutral atom. I1 plus plus A2 A1 plus I2 plus where I1 plus plasma ion. A2 background neutral atom. A1 energetic neutral atom. I2 plus lower energy ion. 
species 1 and the second of may be the same or different and an exchange of two electrons is possible, e.g., H plus plus HH plus H plus proton hydrogen charge exchange or He2 plus plus He2 plus He2 plus alpha helium charge exchange. Due to its charge neutrality, the resulting ena is subject to gravitational forces only. Because gravitation influences can normally be ignored, it is safe to assume that the ena preserves the vector momentum of the original pre-interaction plasma ion. Some ENAs are lost in further charge exchange, electron collisions and photoionization. But a great many travel very long distances in space completely undisturbed. Although plasma recombination and neutral atom acceleration by the solar gravitation may also contribute to an inner population under certain conditions. The main exception to this creation scenario is the flux of interstellar gas, where neutral particles from the local interstellar medium penetrate the heliosphere with considerable velocity which classifies them as ENAs as well. Species of ENAs proton hydrogen charge exchange collisions are often the most important process in space plasma because hydrogen is the most abundant constituent of both plasmas and background gases and hydrogen charge exchange occurs at very high velocities involving little exchange of momentum. In general, only a few species are important for ENA formation, namely hydrogen, helium, oxygen and sulfur. Atomic hydrogen dominates Earth's neutral particle environment from altitudes of 600 km to 1000 km. The interstellar and solar winds are mainly protons with the solar wind also containing tilde 5% alpha particles. Helium and oxygen are also important Earth species. Planetary magnetospheric plasma consists mostly of protons with some helium and oxygen. Jupiter's magnetosphere contains sulfur ions as well, due to volcanic activity its moon Io. Background gases The corresponding neutral gases are the geocorona for the Earth's magnetosphere, a planetary exosphere for a planetary magnetosphere, the local interstellar medium in the boundary region of the heliosphere at the termination shock and the heliopause. Energies ENAs are found everywhere in space and are directly observable at energies from 10 electron volts to more than 1 MeV. Their energies are described more with reference to the instruments used for their detection than to their origins. No single particle analyzer can cover the entire energy interval from 10 electron volts to beyond 1 MeV. ENA instruments are roughly divided into low, medium and high overlapping groups that can be arbitrary and vary from author to author. The low, medium and high energy range from one author is shown in the graph along with the energy ranges for the three instruments aboard the image satellite. A high-energy instrument, HENA measuring 10 to 500 keV energy to study Earth's ring current. A medium ENA instrument, MENA measuring 1 to 30 keV to study the plasma sheet, and a low ENA instrument measuring between 10 electron volts and 500 electron volts to study the ionospheric source of ions flowing from the polar cap. Atoms are usually considered the NAs if they have kinetic energies clearly higher than can be reached by typical thermodynamic planetary atmospheres, which is usually in excess of one electron volt. This classification is somewhat arbitrary being driven by the lower limits of an ER measurement instrumentation. The high-end limitations are imposed by both measurement techniques and for scientific reasons. Magnetospheric ENA imaging Magnetospheres are formed by the solar wind plasma flow around planets with an intrinsic magnetic field. Although planets and moons lacking magnetic fields may sometimes form magnetosphere-like plasma structures, the ionospheres of weakly magnetized planets such as Venus and Mars set up currents that partially deflect the solar wind flow around the planet. Although magnetospheric plasmas have very low densities, e.g., near Jupiter's moon Europa, plasma pressures are about 10-13 bars, compared to 1 bar at Earth's surface, and are responsible for magnetospheric dynamics and emissions. 
For example, geomagnetic storms create serious disturbances in Earth's cable communications systems, navigational systems and power distribution systems. The strength and orientation of the magnetic field with respect to solar wind flow determines the shape of the magnetosphere. It is usually compressed on the day side and elongated at the night side. Earth's magnetosphere Earth's magnetic field dominates the terrestrial magnetosphere and prevents the solar wind from hitting us head-on. Lacking a large protective magnetosphere, Mars is thought to have lost much of its former oceans and atmosphere to space in part due to the direct impact of the solar wind. Venus with its thick atmosphere is thought to have lost most of its water to space in large part owing to solar wind ablation. Understanding the magnetosphere increased in importance with the realization of the detrimental impact of geomagnetic storms caused by solar coronal mass ejections, particularly in years of high solar activity. In addition to long-known effects on Earth's cable communication systems, communications, broadcasting, navigation and security applications are increasingly dependent on satellites. Most of these satellites are well within the protective magnetosphere but are vulnerable to space weather systems that affect them adversely. There are also radiation hazards for humans traveling at high polar altitudes or in orbiting spacecraft many countries, including the U.S. Provide a space weather service reporting existing or predicted geomagnetic storms, solar radiation storms and radio blackouts. ENA detection in Earth's magnetosphere The first dedicated ENA instrument was launched on a night tomahawk-sounding rocket from Fort Churchill, Manitoba, Canada. This experiment was followed by the launch of a similar instrument on a javelin-sounding rocket in 1970 to an altitude of 840 kilometers at Wallops Island, off the coast of Virginia. In 1972 and 1973, the presence of ENA signatures explained inconsistencies in measurements by the IMP-7 and 8 satellites. ENA data from the NASA ESAISEE-1 satellite enabled the construction of the first global image of the storm time ring current in 1982. This was a breakthrough that paved the way for the use of ENAs as a powerful imaging technique. ENAs were also detected during the 1982 magnetic storm by SEEP instrument on the NASA S-81-1 spacecraft. In 1989, the exospheric hydrogen atom population around Earth was extensively studied by the NASA Dynamic Explorer satellite. An instrument with a dedicated high-energy ENA detection channel was flown on the 1991 NASA CRRES satellite. A more sophisticated high-energy particle instrument was launched on the 1992 NASA ISAS-GEOTAIL spacecraft dedicated to observing Earth's magnetosphere. Precipitating ENAs can be studied from a low Earth orbit and were measured, looking out, by CRRES and the 1995 Swedish Astrid satellites. The new millennium saw ENA imaging coming into its own. In July 2000, a set of ENA images of the Earth's ring current were made during a geomagnetic storm. The storm was triggered by a fast coronal mass ejection that erupted from the Sun on July 14, 2000 and arrived at Earth the next day. Launched in 2008, the NASA Twins mission provides the capability for stereoscopically imaging the magnetosphere by imaging ENAs over a broad energy range using identical instruments on two widely spaced high-altitude, high-inclination spacecraft. TWINS enables three-dimensional visualization and the resolution of large-scale structures and dynamics within the magnetosphere. Planetary and other magnetospheres Magnetospheres of other planets have been studied by flyby spacecraft, by orbiters, landers and by Earth-based observations. Earth's moon in February 2009, the ESA Saralina instrument aboard India's CHANDRAYAAN-1 detected hydrogen ENAs sputtered from the lunar surface by solar wind protons. 
predictions had been that all impacting protons would be absorbed by the lunar regolith but for an as-yet unknown reason. 20% of them are bounced back as low-energy hydrogen ENAs. It is hypothesized that the absorbed protons may produce water and hydroxyls in interactions with the regolith. The Moon has no magnetosphere. Mercury The proposed 2014 ESA Bepi Colombo mission includes inner instruments to further its objective to study the origin, structure and dynamics of Mercury's magnetic field. The LENA instrument will resemble the SARA instrument sent to Earth's moon. In addition to magnetospheric ENAs, sputtering from Mercury's surface is also expected. Venus launched in 2005. The ESA VEX mission's Aspera consists of two dedicated ENA detectors. In 2006 ENA images were obtained of the interaction between the solar wind and the Venusian upper atmosphere, showing massive escape of planetary oxygen ions. Mars launched in 2003. The ESA MEX mission's Aspera instrument has obtained images of the solar wind interacting with the upper Martian atmosphere. The 2004 observations show solar wind plasma and accelerated ions very deep in the ionosphere, down to 270 kilometers. Above the dayside planetary surface, evidence for solar wind atmospheric erosion. Jupiter The gas instrument on the ESA, NASA Ulysses, launched in 1990, produced unique data on interstellar, helium characteristics and ENAs emitted from Jupiter's Io Taurus. On its Jupiter flyby in 2000, the NASA, ESA, ASI Cassini's Inca instrument confirmed a neutral gas torus associated with Europa. Cassini's inner images also showed Jupiter's magnetosphere to be dominated by hydrogen atoms ranging from a few to 100 keV. The atoms are emitted from the planet's atmosphere and from neutral gas tori near the inner Galilean moons. A population of heavier ions was also detected, indicating a significant emission of oxygen and or sulfur from Jupiter's magnetosphere. Saturn The first dedicated ENA camera was flown on the NASA, ESA, ASR Cassini mission, launched in 1997 to study Saturn's magnetosphere. Saturn's main radiation belt was measured beginning at an altitude 70,000 km from its surface and reaching out to 783,000 km. Cassini also detected a previously unknown inner belt nearer its surface that is about 6,000 km thick. The dynamics of Saturn's magnetosphere are very different from Earth's. Plasma co-rotates with Saturn in its magnetosphere. Saturn's strong magnetic field and rapid rotation create a strong co-rotational electric field that accelerates plasma in its magnetosphere until it reaches rotation speeds near that of the planet. Because Saturn's moons are essentially sitting still in this very high speed flow, a complex interaction between this plasma and the atmosphere of the moon Titan was observed. Titan Cassini's Mimi Incarina instrument has observed Titan on many occasions revealing the structure of the magnetospheric interaction with Titan's dense atmosphere. Several studies have been performed on Titan's inner emissions. Uranus and Neptune NASA's Voyager 2 took advantage of its orbit to explore Uranus and Neptune, the only spacecraft to ever have done so. In 1986 spacecraft found a Uranian magnetic field that is both large and unusual. More detailed investigations have yet to be carried out. Heliospheric inner imaging the heliosphere is a cavity built up by the solar wind as it presses outward against the pressure of the local interstellar medium. As the solar wind is a plasma, it is charged and so carries with it the sun's magnetic field. So the heliosphere can be conceptualized as the solar system's magnetosphere. The edge of the heliosphere is found far beyond the orbit of Pluto where diminishing solar wind pressure is stopped by the pressure from the LISM. 
The background neutral gas farina production at the heliospheric boundary comes predominantly from interstellar gas penetrating the heliosphere. A tiny amount comes from solar wind neutralization of interplanetary dust near the Sun. The heliospheric boundaries are invisible and fluctuating. Although the densities are low, the enormous thickness of the heliosheath make it a dominant source of ENAs, aside from planetary magnetospheres. Because of the strong dependence of ENA characteristics on heliospheric properties, remote ENA imaging techniques will provide a global view of the structure and dynamics of the heliosphere unattainable by any other means. The first glimpse of this view was announced in October 2009, when the NASA IBEX mission returned its first image of the unexpected ENA ribbon at the edge of the heliosphere. Results revealed a previously unpredicted, very narrow ribbon that is two to three times brighter than anything else in the sky at the edge of the heliosphere that was not detected by Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 in the region. These results are truly exciting as they do not match any existing theoretical models of this region. Cassini also ENA imaged the heliosphere and its results complement and extend the IBEX findings making it possible for scientists to construct the first comprehensive sky map of the heliosphere. Preliminary Cassini data suggest the heliosphere may not have the comet-like shape predicted by existing models but that its shape may be more like a large, round bubble. Estimates for size of the heliosphere vary between 150 to 200 astronomical units. It is believed that Voyager 1 passed the heliosphere's termination shock in 2002 at approx. 85 to 87 astronomical units while Voyager 2 passed the termination shock in 2007 at about 85 astronomical units. Others place the termination shock at a mean distance of 100 astronomical units. Because the solar wind varies by a factor of two during the 11-year solar cycle, there will be variations in the size and shape of the heliosphere. Known as heliosphere breathing, the huge distances involved mean we will never accumulate a large number of in-situ measurements of the various layers of the heliosphere. Voyager 1 and 2 took 27 years and 30 years, respectively, to arrive at the termination shock. It is worth noting that for large distances to the object, high energy and slower ENAs emitted simultaneously would be detected at different times. This time difference varies from 1 to 15 minutes for observing Earth's magnetosphere from a high-altitude spacecraft to more than a year for imaging the heliospheric boundary from an Earth orbit. Flares, CMEs in a surprising development, a wholly different kind of Venus source appeared in 2006. The Stereo spacecraft detected neutral hydrogen atoms with energies in the 2 to 5 MeV range from the flare. CME saw the 5th of December 2006. These particles were not detected with an instrument designed to see ENAs but there was sufficient ancillary data to make the observation quite unambiguous. Accelerating ENAs without ionizing them would be difficult. So the reasonable interpretation here is that September protons from the flare CME were able to find singly charged He and He-like atoms in the solar wind, and thence to convert and continue without magnetic effects. The particles thus arrived prior to the September protons themselves, constrained to follow the Parker spiral. Although no other event has been detected this way, probably many could, and in principle could provide substantial information about the processes involved in September acceleration and propagation.